underway right quick. Uh, I'm going to pull this right up. Uh, but the first thing that we have uh, right as we start um, is Elizabeth Hudson is with is the Community Engagement Director from the Cowan Center. Um, she reached out to me over spring break and Josh as well uh, to talk to us about a survey that uh, she will be putting out to try to gauge students on what they'd like to see come to the Cowan Center um, and our hopeful return to normalcy in fall of 2021. So she is um, here with us and Elizabeth, whenever you're ready, you have uh, screen sharing permission. So whatever you share, uh, us in this room will be able to see and those along on the Zoom will see it as well. So you go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you all very much for having me. Um, I'm glad to, I'll say be here, but uh, glad to be included in your meeting this afternoon. Uh, really, I don't have anything to share with you on my screen. Uh, I believe that I sent Joshua the link to our draft survey as it stands right now. Um, as he mentioned, my name is Liz Hudson. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Cowan Center, and we are currently busy booking our upcoming season, the 21-22 season, and uh, that's going to be our 25th anniversary. So it's a big deal for us. We're really excited, and uh, it's going to be doubly sweet because we're getting back to live entertainment, which after uh, our last performance was February 29th of last year. So we've been dark uh, since then. So we're really excited for it. And um, the survey that we are going to send out will go out to all of our constant contacts. Uh, but beforehand, we wanted to get some input from uh, the student government organization. And uh, when we have the finalized survey, I would love it if you would share that with your peers, your contacts, um, anyone you think might be interested in coming to a show at the Cowan Center. Uh, but we wanted to include some ideas from you all in there. And uh, kind of to give you an idea of uh, what we're looking for are um, performers, speakers, comedians, um, musicians that fit within our business model. Uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to look over the survey. And um, the first thing I wanted to see was if any of you had uh, questions for me of uh, like what I mean when I say our type of shows, uh, what's on the survey, what we're looking for, things like that to, uh, to help you and uh, so we can get really good suggestions that we think will have a broad appeal. So um, I just want to comment a little bit, uh, really fast. I'm looking at it and I've seen it and I put it through to an email to be sent to everyone. And unfortunately it doesn't look like it went through as I thought. Um, however, would you mind if, if you have it quickly available, could you put it up on the screen and then we'd be able to comment on it that way? Is that readily available? Or I think we could work that from our side. I'm sorry for that. I thought it had gone through and it's something I didn't look back at. Not a problem at all. Bear with me just for a second, um, so I can log into, I've got it in Qualtrics, and um, I'll get it pulled up that way. I'm so sorry about that. No, no, not a problem at all. So let me get it into preview mode. That might be the, no. Nope. That is not going to be the easiest way to look at it. Here, we'll just do this and I'll scroll through it and um, y'all let me know. So uh, bear in mind what you're seeing is uh, kind of the back side of it. Um, there we go. Are you sharing it right now? Oh, there it goes, right there. That's yeah. So there is an example of our Broadway series. And then performing arts. Okay. 
And our Braithwaite Intimate Gathering series is typically uh, musical acts and comedians. So for the purpose of this survey, I've broken it out between the two of them. You can see I have a much longer list of musicians. Okay. Give everybody just a second to look over that. And then comedians and some of our distinguished lecture speaker ideas. Uh, comedians in particular are something that we would love to hear ideas from you all. Um, that's kind of a hard one for us to slot in for the Cowan Center because we look for, I would almost say more family, clean comedians, uh, people who will keep it PG-13 or thereabouts. And uh, that's, that's kind of a hard, hard fit to find. There's uh, not as many out there who fall into that. So yeah, these are our um, four main series. And then we are launching a new uh, series called Kids at Night. And this is for uh, young families, people who are bringing uh, small children, things that they might like to see. And then of course we have a section where we're asking everyone uh, to write in proposals. guys have any comments to it? I would say generally, I mean, like, I think it's really cool to see like, and, and I don't know if it's because I haven't like considered what could be done at the Cowan Center, but it's really cool to see like things that I know a lot of students that whenever they see this or would pop names would pop out to them. I saw Casey Musgraves because like that's, that one would be a cool one from students that they got to see it. And if it was on a, on a, uh, survey for them to see and a lot of these other programs like, had you told me whenever I got here that a possibility of a past vice president would come to the school to speak to me I mean it, even if it's just on this survey that's a really cool thing so I think my perception of students would just be really cool to see these names that well well it's not to say that the other ones aren't high profile but these are names that like you don't have to do much research to know who these some of these specific people are and I think that would really be cool to jump out to a lot of students. Absolutely. So to give you all a little bit of history um, and an idea of what the Cowan Center offers, everything that we bring is a recognized name or a national tour. Um, so we don't, we do have the Tyler Civic Theater, which is a uh, community productions, but what we bring are the national and international tours. So uh, in the past, we have had both Presidents Bush. Uh, we have had Dr. Ben Carson, um, President Vincente Fox, uh, uh, the former president of Mexico. Um, a lot of, I hate to use the word distinguished because it's the name of the series, but like you said, uh, Joshua, high profile uh, speakers. And then when we bring these shows, we've had uh, in the past, Yo-Yo Ma, uh, Itzhak Perlman, uh, Ringo Starr has been here. So we've had a Beatle. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had the Doobie Brothers. And, um, you know, we've had comedian, we've had Wayne Brady, uh, Jeff Foxworthy, Bill Ingvall, actually three out of the four of the Blue Collar Comedy uh, tour guys and um yeah so so that is what we try to bring and to give we say that we bring the world stage to tyler and uh to try to give people an opportunity to see performers just like you would see in uh dallas or uh, a broadway show that you might see in new york Yeah, Adam, Adam had a question. Uh, I do have a question for the, the uh, lecture series. Uh, I think it was further down. It was, I remember yeah. I said, 
uh, Mike Pence's name on there. Uh, how possible is it that we could get, say, someone like Mike Pence or uh, Condoleezza Rice? Is it if, if enough people choose the survey, would it actually be possible to get these people in? Or? So really, the survey is kind of the first step in how we go about booking uh, the various talent. Um, it is entirely possible that Mike Pence could come here. As I mentioned, we had both President uh, George W. Bush and his father, uh, George H. W. Bush. So that's not outside of the realm of possibility for us. Um, a lot of what we like to know is, and the whole purpose of the survey is if we bring someone like that to speak or uh, someone like Casey Musgraves to perform, would people even be interested in coming? Um, and, and that's kind of where the survey stems from, uh, just to gauge people's interest. And from there, you kind of run into a million different um, scenarios as far as actually getting them here. Uh, so it depends on with the speakers, with their schedules, their availability, their personal interest in coming. Um, so, and it can sometimes be years in the making uh, for them to have the availability that matches with ours to get them here. But um, like I said, two former presidents, uh, a presidential candidate, we had a Supreme Court justice. So we have um, accommodated those very high profile speakers. We had uh, Governor Abbott do a town hall in August of 19. Any more questions? Well, I, I didn't want to ask, and, and you communicated with me a little bit, were you wanting to kind of collaborate with student government in some way and where we get this out to students specifically like on one of our upcoming elections? Um, I think you, we, we would definitely be open to helping with that, but is that what you anticipated? Is there any way in that regard that we can help you or is there something else that you kind of had in mind that we can still help you facilitate in some way? So what I would love to see from student government right now, I don't mean right now as of this moment, uh, y'all are the first ones to get a look at the survey. As I mentioned, it will go out to everyone in our constant contact list. But I would love it if you all would participate in this survey and um, give us your feedback on what is here, as well as writing in some other names. And then we can look at your suggestions and see, oh, okay, this is wonderful. This fits in with what we do. Let's put it out there and see what other people think. And then when we send out that broader survey, uh, I would be happy to send that link to you again, Joshua. And then uh, if y'all could tell me the best way to go about sending that to our wider student body uh, so we could hear it from them. But uh, just on the first round, I would love to get suggestions uh, from student government about names we could include with our, our different sections. And that's kind of why I wanted to explain to you like who and what we bring. Uh, so like if you see, as I said, we have brought really big names in the past, but to kind of put things into perspective for you, if we talk about a musical act who only does Vegas residencies or only tours stadiums, they won't even consider the Cowan Center because we don't fit them, nor would they fit us. So like George Strait, for example, uh, or Beyonce, uh, to throw those out there, we're not the type of venue where they perform. So that's why we don't include them on our um, on our survey. And then, for example, with Broadway, right now, one of the hottest uh, musicals out there, Hamilton. I would trade my firstborn child for tickets to Hamilton. I'll just go ahead and be honest because I'm going to trust that none of you will ever meet him to tell him that. 
Um, but we could not get Hamilton right now because before COVID, they had standing performances in London's West End, on Broadway, in Chicago, and I think they either were standing in San Francisco or they were there for a considerable number of months. And they were running three concurrent world tours. And those tours sit down for weeks at a time and they sell out eight performances a week. We don't have the uh, population density to draw from to pull off a week's worth of performances. So it's not feasible for us right now to look at a show like Hamilton. Yeah, so, and, and so, and, and we're considering that, I think like uh, one of the things that like students and one, I think one of the things we can help facilitate is whenever students write in things that are probably uh, what I would expect to come up, something like that. Uh, Hamilton was one that came into my mind as well. Is like how we're gonna facilitate, you know, discussing with them, this is why those things fit, don't fit in. Um, and I think I think those kind of things will come up, but um, I wanted to bring up that we have two elections coming up in which we'll be sending out the ballot to all, every student that's enrolled at UT Tyler. Um, so what I wanted to propose to you is that we could add that uh, to either one of those. One is happening next week, March 24th to the 26th, and one is happening in April um, from the 14th to the 16th. Um, we've done it in the past before. Um, it's easy as getting this format from you and putting it onto there and we send it out and, and it's on us to facilitate and help market that. And then it, it just happens, we get we get a good deal out of both ends if that's something that could be considered and that's something that I think student government could discuss uh, in the coming weeks, depending on um, what, what it was that the Cowan Center wanted to see. Absolutely, that would be tremendously helpful if you all would be willing to do that. Let me, um, I have a meeting tomorrow with our executive director and let me confer with her um, to see which either you said next week or April will be when those two ballots are sent out. Yes, March 24th to the 26th is uh, the officer one. Um, and so that would be a pretty short turnaround if you were considering that because that's um, just over a week away. But the next one we'll be doing a lot of marketing for uh, through other events. And that one will happen um, on April 14th to the 16th. And then that would get us time if anything else comes up possibly. And then that would give us, uh, or specifically Joshua needs a little bit more time to get these um, put on there. And then we can market both of them together. I think from my perception, I don't know how the rest of student government feels. It'd probably be better to wait just because then we can collaborate more on marketing pieces or stuff like that. I agree, um, especially because I am one person and any feedback I get from you all uh, and the meeting tomorrow is going to be with our advisory board. So I'm sure they'll have input for us as well. Um, so just to filter through those, uh, talk them over with Cowan staff and then get it into the survey. Um, I am good, but I do have limitations. Uh, so that April 14th to 16th, and then, like you said, that would give us an opportunity uh, to get it shared on the Cowan Center Facebook page, uh, to get it on our website, and uh, give it broader appeal. So I think that would, uh, that'd be really great. Awesome. And so, and I don't mean to cut you short, so if you have anything else, um, you feel free to share that, but also if any senators have anything to add before um, Elizabeth finishes up, I guess. Yeah, Josh, do you have, Josh has a question in the back. He's hiding back there. Yes, yeah, so I try to stay off camera. Hey, Liz, this is Josh Names. Uh, hey, if, how are you? Doing well. Uh, if we're going to add the uh, survey to the next week's election, I do ask if possible if I can have that by Friday, so that way I can uh, included, typically I publish a ballot so that way in, in advance so that way students can look at who's on the ballot and so I'd like to get that finalized and make sure that this is included uh, so that they know what they will, what's going to be on the ballot and what they'll be completing when the election rolls out. And so uh, if not, then we've got plenty of time, but for next week, I plan on wrapping up the ballot on Friday.
So you would need the survey from me by day after tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If it's gonna uh, be valid. If not, then we can do it for the Sorry, I'm making notes here. Okay. Uh, then taking that into account, um, probably, we need to shoot for April. Um, because our advisory board meeting, our Cowan advisory board meeting is tomorrow afternoon. Um, and so I'll need to take everything back from that. And if I'm getting feedback from y'all in order to send this to you, uh, Josh, that doesn't give um, SGA very much time to respond either. Okay, so we'll we, and we can do a lot more to plan ourselves for April 14th um, and 16th, including the fact that I, I wasn't able to get this out to everyone before you came. So that would already um, help us a little bit and give us a little more lead time uh, before we approach that day. And then, as I said, we have a couple of events that'll be coming up, including uh, being in the UC uh, quite a few times before that. And we'll be able to get it out to a lot of students that this is coming up or and or give it out to more SGA members who uh, couldn't attend today that they may have something to add or uh, questions to uh, give to you. And if that happens, if, I'll, if that's okay with you, I'll forward any SGA questions to you via email. Yes, please. If anyone has questions over anything that I didn't cover today or anyone who wasn't able to attend uh, the meeting, please reach out to me about that. Um, I'd love to talk with them about the survey or the Cowan Center, um, and yeah, just answer any questions. All righty, and thank you so much. And I don't think anybody has any more questions for now, so um, we will be in more correspondence about that uh, later, and then I'll be in contact with you for any more questions that may have popped up after today. Okay, lovely. Well, thank you all so much for having me this afternoon. Um, I appreciate the enthusiasm and I'll be really glad if you all would like to participate in this. Uh, we would love to hear from everyone. So I look forward to seeing those emails from you and um, everybody have a great evening. Thank you so much, ma'am. You have a wonderful evening as well. You'll take care. All righty. Um, so as you guys see, we'll probably come up with some more stuff. And as you guys know, we have uh, several events coming up along with uh, tabling in the University Center that will help us uh, get that out to students and make sure they know about uh, the center election. I think just because um, officer elections has kind of snuck up on us, so it would help to kind of review uh, what that looks like and have you know three weeks dedicated to marketing for that. Because I was kind of surprised to see some of the names I saw on there. So it'll be pretty exciting to get that out to students and see what they think of that as well. Um, with that, is anyone uh, present for open forum? If not, we'll move right into officer report. Um, okay, so with that, we'll move on. I'll start off. Um, I want to recap really fast. I sent out something this week to every senator um, regarding broadband access uh, from the UT system. It was a document that template is made, so all you have to do is give your example or someone else's example of their broadband struggles um, during COVID-19. It doesn't have to just be that. The focus is just on the fact that so many um, Texans don't have uh, broadband internet connection in their homes. Uh, so if you guys can do that, I'd really, really, it'd be really cool to have at least one from every uh, senator. It can just be talking to anyone in your class who probably has it. Um, there's a large amount of students who um, have a problem with it. They're asking me to get one, at least 10 from UT Tyler, so it helped me a lot. And plus, it'd be cool to have more than 10 because I know that that's going to be a struggle for a lot of people. It was a short turnaround, but it'd be really cool for UT Tyler to show up and have the most. Because these, um, while I don't know, if, and I can't say for sure if the testimonies will go 
directly to the governor, but it, it could go as far and impact stuff as far as on the Texas legislature. So it's a pretty big deal and it's a really cool opportunity for us to be able to do that. Um, however, I wouldn't uh, just let anybody you know or anybody you're talking to know that this is what it's going to be used for because that's just one of those uh, comfortability things that they would probably want to know. Um, other than that, uh, I've been in the office a whole bunch. In fact, I was doing a tabling yesterday about the recycling. Um, I've been working a lot on recycling and I'm going to be following up soon um, with Scott over in um, online learning about our Canvas discussions that we we're having in the past. Um, I know, I think, uh, Valerie, you said you had a meeting or you were reaching out to Ashley Bill about advising. That's something that Josh um, had talked about in our eboard meeting. And I want to say that he's asked us to follow up on some of those things and make sure we get those finished because we had a really, we had a lot of good initiatives and stuff, but we just need to make sure we have them finished. Um, as we go forward. Last, because officer elections are coming up, um, I would say that um, also what we decided in the e-board is that we're going to write a continuation document to next uh, year's e-board, kind of like, hey, this is what we worked on that we didn't finish, and this is what we'd like to see go forward if we got perhaps any say in what goes forward. Now, there's no requirement there, uh, just like, hey, you know, 2021, 2022, this is where we left off in our thoughts on it. This is another way we think that could make it up. Uh, go pretty far. So um, um, so yeah, thank you, uh, Senator Nelson. Um, I would say if you're not really having it, um, if there's a way you could talk to the on-campus director at the Palestine campus, because and I can't say that, and you haven't talked to anybody, but I think like it's hard to reach out to everyone and maybe there's someone on your campus that can send it out to everyone who takes classes there. And if they can send it out to them, uh, that would help us a lot because it would kind of work for us, but I don't know how it can manage all 7,000 on campus UT Tyler students that are here at the Tyler campus. And I think that would probably work for, um, I think that would probably work for uh, you guys because there's not as large of a population and they would be able to afford all those responses to you. Um, yeah, Josh? Uh, the contact of the Palestine campus is Susan Harris. Susan Harris. Yeah, she actually just asked it, um, who it would be. So Susan Harris. Awesome. And thank you for asking that question. And that, and that goes for especially Houston engineering uh, senators too. If you guys got it, if you could reach out to uh, Dr. What was it? I'm Dr. Garcia. Dr. Garcia. He would probably be able to send that out to people. Um, so it would be really cool, as I said, to send a lot of those uh, their way and uh, really show what UT Tyler can do in that regard. So that's all I have, and you can go ahead, uh, Vice President Dowd. All right, so I am working on just the final details of our Meet the SGA event. Um, and then, again, working on continuing for next year with officer elections coming up. Um, I'm excited to be working on that document of moving it forward, uh, and then the rest of my report is in the morning. All right. Um, and so I would report on Treasurer. The only thing that I have is, as Claire isn't here today, as far as I heard, SJC had two requests come in, and a lot of senators were there to uh, sit in on those requests. So that was really cool uh, to see students come through for that. And I don't know, Josh, do you know or remember the status of who those were? If you can uh, give that to us. One, uh, one group, uh, yeah. uh, so they did not meet on one group. The second group um, was the Nepalese Student Association and the committee approved uh, the idea of the group $450 for the event. Awesome. Uh, that's awesome. And, and it was cool just to see that uh, they had that. So that is good that the students are coming for that. And I think we kind of stressed some more at the SGA table uh, that week too. So, um, Thank you, Jennifer, and we'll hear more about SGAC uh, later next week. Um, and until then, you go ahead, uh, Secretary Cook. Um, so I um, have been slowly reaching out to other student governments um, to uh, learn a little bit more about how they proceed with their meetings and how they conduct their documents and the subject of it. Um, I am also excited to be helping Vice President Kavanaugh on the uh, letter and the rest of my report. Awesome. Uh, so 
unfortunately as well, uh, Parliamentary Ray cannot be here today, so I'll be reading an email he sent to me um, this afternoon. There's been substantial progress made on the SGA disc golf course improvements, actually a whole lot. They did a whole lot of work on that. Um, and it'll be cool to see what they can do in the next week because they're moving really fast. And Robert's done a good job on this. I met with the project coordinator multiple times and we have sorted out most of the preparation. Our goals have been addressed and we are working on quotes for the concrete work and other updates. It's a big project that'll be the sustainable long-term with no additional maintenance costs for many years to come. This benefits SGA as well as the entire community. The upgrades reflect well on SGA and give our organization recognition for all the hard work we do on campus. Uh, further, he said, I know VP Stavanaugh has been working on some cool ideas for the Meet the SGA event. I'm pretty excited about that. I hope it will be a good opportunity for outreach and to grow the organization. I hope so too. And it will be fun. I did invite the uh, president. Uh, I did let them know that. I did invite President Calhoun to that event. Well, I haven't heard any uh, uh, reply to that, mainly because it's late this afternoon. Uh, I hope that he gets to be there. Of course, I think I said it last week, if he does, uh, show up. If he does say that he'll be there for that, then um, the expectation for us showing up will be quite a bit different because uh, he's very excited at the opportunity and even the fact that I asked him to be there. Um, so it'd be really cool just because I know a lot of people I haven't even had the opportunity to meet him. Uh, and a lot of students don't even realize the changes that have occurred, much less they know there's a new president, but don't really understand what that means. And I think us being there would be able, able to alleviate that and kind of draw off that attention. So with that, we'll move to committee reports and uh, student life. All right, so I have three t-shirt designs uh, and I'm working on a couple more. I did not have a committee meeting today because I did have an interview um, for an off-campus position, um, but I will be sending out an email for you guys to give me some feedback on the t-shirt designs. Um, and of course, if there's a design of your own that you'd like to submit, that would be great. Um, and again, just working with President Minhenna to get a food service vendor for our Meet the SGA event, and of course, stepping up the caliber of the event because President Calhoun um, has been invited to attend. So that is it for my committee this week. All righty, thanks so much. And uh, Secretary Foote. Um, so nobody came to my committee this week, which makes me sad. Um, don't come to my committee, please. I will send out the email with the Zoom link again and maybe send out even like a little calendar invite. That way it's easier for y'all to find it. Um, however, uh, it's, been, it's been a week. I, huh, I've been incredibly busy. It is scary how many things I have to do in a week. So yeah, I did not get as much done. So I guess it was a good thing we didn't have a committee because I didn't have a whole lot to talk about. But I'm ready to see y'all next week. That's yeah. it. Yeah, so, and I don't mean to speak for uh, JT's committee, but I know there's a lot of recycling stuff coming down the pipeline, a lot of stuff we're doing there. I may uh, push the task on that committee to uh, kind of design or look for what cost for uh, personal uh, recycling bins and apartments would look like. Um, also, election stuff, especially with this new poll that will be on the end of our senator elections, uh, that'll be an important part of the communications committee. Um, and then anything else in the work we're doing, uh, finishing up the semester will be a part of that as well. Um, so with that, I did, we kind of elaborate on SGAC, so I will, yeah, you have a question? Yeah, that? I have a question about the recycling thing. Yeah. So I took that survey and it asked like, um, if you had seen any bins anywhere on campus, mm -hmm. are those out yet? Yes. Like where are they? They're in every common area on, in every building on this campus. Okay. Um, there, there's about 70 of them. So the UC isn't as prevalent just because they're some of the older ones and they probably blend in at this point because you're just like they've been a part of the campus since you got, got here. So they just kind of these new ones are uh, 30. I think they call them 30, but it might be like 23 gallons, something like that. Uh, blue, they have a big uh, poster on it. That poster we're actually going to be probably putting to social media soon as well. The same poster that they have on there. Um, we're, I'm also going to be shooting a commercial this Friday um, that we're going to be narrating like what's going to what happened how clean you have to have the products and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so slightly stage fright, not too much, but that'll be fun. And as that comes out, I'll let you guys know. Uh, so that'll be fun as well. Um, I, I don't know if I have anything else. So we'll move on to uh, a committee report from Robert. 
Uh, this is straight from the email. It said the SGA documents are always a work in progress. I always make enormous effort to consider and adapt to any and all feedback. There's been lots of communication with faculty, advisors, students, senators, officers, and et cetera, as always. When I'm able to return, hopefully next week, we will continue with the discussion, bring some new discussion, address any concerns, and continue to improve the SGA documents to the best of our ability. I also have reached out and studied other student governments at much larger colleges, and I have to say I'm proud of UT Tyler's SGA. Other schools should be looking to us for inspiration. Our organization operates at a much higher level of professionalism with a strong student focus and unity. I feel it's necessary to acknowledge our dedicated senators and our hardworking leadership for making this happen. Congratulations and thank you. I'll see y'all next week. And yeah, starting to tear up reading that right there. That's awesome. Um, so, and sadly, Robert hasn't been able to be here over the past couple of weeks. So he will be returning as, a, as he said next week, just because uh, many things that are happening on his end. Um, so with that, um, I did want to say just because there's one housing center, I, I reached out to housing uh, today about because I've had a lot of students and this is just part of my officer report that I missed because um, a lot of students have been coming to me whenever on campus um, on campus housing sport facilities will open such as basketball courts and the volleyball courts he got back to me rather quickly and he said that he, they're going to be assessing what the numbers look like post spring break and they said if that it looks good by housing standards that volleyball courts should be open April 1st and then after that they're going to wait another two week time frame uh, for the basketball court. Um, that's at Liberty Landing. So I think it's pretty fair. Oh, well, that's going to be slow. I think the reason they decided that on the basketball court is because based off the guidelines they had, the basketball court was the one um, most often breaking those guidelines. Students using that at the most often time. I think that's just what I've talked to him about in the past. And so that's what I would guess is his reason. So if you have students ask you about that, I know I've had a lot, mainly because I'm one of the students who uses those facilities a lot. Um, so I think that's a pretty important thing, and it was cool that he got back to me so fast. Uh, I just want to throw that out there because I told him I would let people know. Um, that being said, we'll move to student voice reports. Again, I'll be reading an email for someone. Uh, College of Business or College of Engineering is not listed up there right now, but uh, Senator Boardman asked me to read a couple of things off uh, for the College of Engineering, and then after that, uh, Senator Wingate, if you have anything to share from the College of Pharmacy. Uh, he said that there was another virtual career fair last month. Dozens of College of Engineering students attended that. Engineering professors have started hosting hybrid classes this semester. However, most students prefer attending in person. Uh, student organizations in the College of Engineering have been hosting events both in person and Zoom. On average, 35 students attend these events, about the same as before COVID. That's also very cool. There have been concerns that the credit card readers for the vending machines in the RBS, RBN are not working. Um, facilities is currently working to address this concern. Um, uh, and then he also wanted to know, I think he's going to be bringing a center project that he brought a couple weeks ago back to us uh, regarding benches in front of RBN. And he said that Andy, uh, Dr. Krauss over at facilities has been uh, giving with him on updated prices and he's going to be bringing that to us in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, with that, uh, we'll move to uh, Senator Wingate, if you have anything from the College of Pharmacy. Uh, you feel free to bring that up right now. And if not, um, as far as the College of Pharmacy, I just wanted to let you all know that our student pharmacists um, from every year are actually participating at the Harvey Convention Center and um, with NEP Health to provide COVID vaccinations. Um, so I know that it's kind of slow, but Texas is ahead of the age rollouts. So if anybody is wanting to get a vaccine, I would just make sure that you're watching what category that we're in. And just to let you know that we are doing our part to help the community. We are there Monday through Saturday, um, giving shots as much as we can and trying to help as much as we can because they don't have enough nurses and you know, they have two physicians on staff in case of reactions, but there hasn't been any. So we've been really busy working with them. All right. And sorry, is that all? Yeah, that's it. I mean, if like I said, if y'all want a COVID vaccine, then just pay attention to what categories we in. Most likely it'll be available to everybody 18 and over by the end of May. 
All right. Wow. That's really cool. Thank you for that. Because uh, I definitely went in there and, and uh, you not just told me. Uh, so that's awesome to hear. And uh, thank you to you and I guess the pharmacy students for getting ahead and helping uh, people with those. Uh, so with that, we have no other uh, um, we have no other uh, senator reports. So we will move into old business. Um, as gosh, I can't remember. If we have we don't have anything for old business. Um, so does anybody have anything else besides besides what's out there that we may have missed before moving to new business? Is this where we bring up the changes to the document about closing the meetings to the public? Or does that need to be brought up again? Uh, that uh, I do believe will be brought up when uh, Robert Ray returns. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Senator Watkins. Is this where we talk about the, uh, the uh, graduation? Or is that new business? No, if you wanted to open up an item for discussion, you can do that in new business. If, like, if you want to bring up a broad discussion about any progress there is on that, um, and you feel free to do that. We'll, when we get to new business, we have two things on the agenda first, and you can see behind me. Oh, yeah. um, once that is done, you feel free to do that if you wish. So nothing in old business, we will move to new business. And the first uh, thing on the slate is we have two uh, students who have come uh, to me about joining student government. Uh, we'll start with the first one that's on the list, and then we'll move to uh, Justin Barrio after that. So we'll start with Hyatt Hines. Um, he came to me uh, wanting to join student government, and it's someone I know well. So Hyatt, whenever you're ready to speak, then you can stand up, sit down, but uh, just present yourself, anything you've done thus far, anything like that, why you want to join and stuff like that. Um, uh, just go ahead. Where do I where look? Where do I look? Oh, you can look. You can um, I'm Hyatt Hines. Uh, I'm a sophomore here, or I'm in my second year. Uh, I play golf for the school. I'm currently a economics major and finance major, and I just want to join SJ because I like UT Tyler. I like what's going on here, and uh, it's a pretty fast-moving campus, and I think it'd be uh, interesting to be a part of it and the opportunities that go along with it. Awesome. Do you have any questions? Well, no, and that's what I was about to ask. Does anybody have any questions uh, for Hyatt? Yes. What is your major? Economics and finance. Okay. Any other questions? Dogs. <laughs> he likes dogs. Just this just in. <laughs> All righty. Well, actually, traditionally, I, I don't think we have any more. So typically, we ask you to step out. Um, I promise nothing's out there to get you. Okay. If you step out, then we'll we just have a brief discussion and we'll vote on it, and then after that, we'll call you back in, and then open clap. All righty. Does anybody have any extra discussion to add before we move? Uh, to vote high into a vacant Souls College business seat. Where would you be joining? Like, I don't know what it's called, not the committee thing, but like how you have your housing senators and all that. Where would he be? Uh, Souls College of Business. Okay. Yeah. Enrolled there as well as the College of Arts and Sciences, because that's where they come out. So we have the the motion to vote for it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I understand a motion to vote on that point. And no motion to appoint. Oh. Okay. I entertain a motion to appoint high Hines to a vacant uh school college of business. Motion to appoint high Hines to a vacant school college of business senator. Second. All right. So we'll put a vote up there and then for all those in uh person, um those all those in favor, please say aye and raise your hand. And be opposed. Okay, so I think there's probably one of Oh, it's because, okay, we'll just end it because I don't think we have 
So this is how we'll do it, and I know there's somebody else on Zoom. Uh, we'll get high in. I haven't done this in person in a long time, but all we're going to do is knock it out, do an oath as most traditional oaths go. After that, Justin, I'll let you know when you can uh, start, and the process will be very similar. Um, so we'll go get high in really fast. <laughs> so, I uh, congratulations. We'll do a little. So, what we're going to do now, uh, you get to do this nifty oath. Uh, I got us telling them. I haven't done one in person and actually a little bit. Uh, so, I hope I don't miss it up too much. So what you're going to do is stand up. We get to do the, the very traditional way. So you're going to raise your right hand, and whenever you say I, I say enter your name, mm -hmm. first and last name, and then whenever it gets to the office of enter your position, it's not pulling up. So I'll say office of Souls College and Business Center. Okay, that's all you have to do. So it's not pulling up correctly, but you'll just repeat after me. So Or try here and change me lost, but that might be more. So I enter your name. I, I, and I. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I shall faithfully represent. That I shall faithfully represent. The interests of the student body. The interests of the student body. Of the University of Texas at Tyler. Of the University of Texas at Tyler. I shall dutifully uphold. I shall dutifully uphold. And preserve the Constitution. And preserve the Constitution. And bylaws of the student government. And bylaws of the student government. While ardently executing. While ardently executing. The office of. The Office of Souls College of Business Senator for the student body for the student body at the University of Texas at Tyler at the University of Texas at Tyler. Awesome. So awesome, um, awesome, and welcome, Hyatt. Um, so we'll add you to the roster right there, and then we will move on uh, to Justin. I see that you're on Zoom, so whenever you're ready, sir, uh, very similar to Hyatt, present whatever you like about yourself. Uh, what you think qualifies you and why you'd be interested in student government and then um, any questions we'll move you into a waiting room uh, effectively the same thing thank you yeah so uh, my name is justin baria um i'm currently a junior at ut tyler um the houston engineering center studying civil engineering um i actually uh, went to u of h uh, did a couple years of engineering there didn't work out then I switched over to supply chain logistics, um, graduated in 2018 and um, COVID hit. I was working for about a year and decided to go back to school and finish my engineering degree. So I got in last semester or last year um, and have been at UT Tyler for a little under a year now. Um, I am a part of ASCE, but I'm also a big part of uh, Steelbridge. Um, Taylor Knight has uh, been like holding me under his wing, which has been great. Um, and the reason why I want to join SGA is just to uh, be a bridge for the uh, Houston location. Um, I know last uh, meeting was Senator Ord, um, and I know that he'll be a great representative for mechanical engineers out there. So I just wanted to be a representative for the civil engineering uh, students in the Houston and um, kind of be a uh, a bridge between main campus and the Houston location. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much, Justin. Did anybody have any questions for uh, Justin or just general comments, support anything for uh, Justin before we move forward? All right, so I just want to add one one brief context. Uh, Justin, we, we have two available, um, or we only have two total uh, College of Engineering for HELSA, our Houston Engineering Center. Um, so what will happen is if you're voted in today, uh, then you'll be voted in as a College of Engineering Center, but you still represent uh, the Houston Engineering Campus, also um, communicating heavily with our um, UT Tyler Campus uh, Benjamin Boardman, and you'll be working the same 
uh, same things as him. So I don't expect your role to change that much, but it would be a heavy, I'm a little bit of a heavy emphasis um, on working with Benjamin from here as well, while also collaborating with uh, both Taylor and Ord. I just want to let you know that uh, before we move on. Yeah, uh, sounds great. Thank you. All right, sir. So we'll move you into a waiting room and then we'll call him back in. <laughs> so, does anybody have any quick comments, uh, concerns, anything uh, for uh, Justin before I point you? He's an excellent team member. That's all I got to say. Awesome. Thank you, Senator Knight. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So, seeing no further questions, I guess I'll entertain a motion to appoint Justin Barrett to a vacant College of Engineering um, Senator position. Motion to appoint. Okay, so he's going to pull that up. And so all those um, senators present in person, um, who, what is that, this one? Okay, so anyway. So all those in favor in person uh, for appointing Justin to that vacant position, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. Okay, and any opposed? All right, and so that will go forward. Um, we need to pull up the oath onto this so he can see it. Yeah, if you pull it up, is it right here? You just pull him in and then share a screen so he can see it. Oh, okay. So just about a year ago today, I would have had that open uh, like down. But, I mean, I would take a break from it. And I'd be able to, I could say it any day, any weather, backwards, upside down, anything. I could be turned around backwards. Or upside down. So, all right. <laughs> Yes. All right, Jesse, congratulations. Uh, you have been appointed to one of the vacant uh, college of engineering positions. Um, so, looking at, um, what we're going to do really quick is pull up the oath so you can see it on your screen. Um, it'll be a little bit different than what we did for uh, now Senator Hines. What we'll do um, is you'll just read it off of what you can see. If you can see this, this document titled the oath, um, just whenever you get to the insert name section, um, insert your full name. Um, and then Office of College of Engineering Senator uh, for insert position. And you may start whenever you go. All you have to do is read it off and insert where it's appropriate. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it all fully on screen. Okay, here we go. Um, I, Justin Baria, do solemnly swear that I shall faithfully represent the interests of the student body of the University of Texas at Tyler. I shall do dutifully uphold and preserve the constitution and bylaws of the Student Government Association while, while ardently executing the Office of uh, Engineering, College of Engineering for the student body at the University of Texas at Tyler. Awesome. Thank you. All right then, and I'll give you um, in conjunction with uh, uh, Senator Boardman and get you guys in contact because as I said, it, it will be a little bit different, uh, but really there's not much that's gonna change just because you guys will be working on the same curriculum, uh, just in different locations. And so it may take a little bit more communication, but I have no doubt that you guys will be able to knock it out. Um, with that being said, we're done with those two appointments. Um, is there anything that we wanna to add to new business, any discussion items of the like? 
you, if you want to bring up what you wanted to bring up, you feel free to do so. Um, Just do it as a motion. I motion to discuss the graduation ceremony briefly. Second. All right, and you have the floor, Senator Watkins. Um, I mainly just wanted to ask uh, for the graduation the way they have it planned for the uh, undergraduates or the Souls College of Business. We're going to be going on Saturday, May 1st. And I want to ask um, what does the plan say about uh, do they ever correct the move out time in conjunction with that or so, anything like that? So, are you saying like how are you asking more of like how they have it lined up for moving out? Like how do they expect students to move out during that time? Josh, do you have any real big no, knowledge? Historically, it? it's been uh, you know 24 hours after your last month, unless you were graduating. If you're graduating, you have an extension to stay until the time you're after your term. You would work with your uh, resident coordinator and schedule move out. But everybody that is returning in fall or the summer. You will go off the instructors that are provided by housing. Okay. But if you're not if you're not graduating, the graduation ceremony is not a good deal. Oh no, it, it makes sense. So work with the work yep. with the RA. So yep. no, the rest of the staff will email out. Uh, I'm calling the state. Thanks, I'm sorry. And that, that's all I have to offer for you. Okay. Oh, uh, wait, you have to win. Uh, well, we're still, in the, just to let you know, we're still in the discussion uh, for commencement. So if there's nothing more, and is it, do you have another point to add for commencement? Um, Taylor Knight does have something. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Senator Knight. Can you summarize what um, Advisor Neves said? I couldn't really hear him. What could you are you saying summarize what Josh what he's yeah what he was saying about commencement? Yeah, Josh, could you say what you had said again? Or so the question was about uh, the housing the move out procedures for residential students that live on the main campus. And so oh, never mind. What I clarified <laughs> uh, graduation, the so housing staff will communicate move out procedures for those who are not graduating. If, they, if students are graduating, then exemptions will be made so they can uh, stay on campus until they graduate. All right. Thank you, Josh. Um, so does anybody have anything else to add to that uh, line of discussion before we uh, close? It? Yeah. Did they ever get back to us about having uh, an alternate plan for weather? Um, as far as I know, they, unless Josh heard it different, I haven't heard anything. The meeting we had today was really regarding uh, marshals for the colleges. It was a lot of like the, the, the specifics on how they are aligned and the college aligned. I haven't heard any changes. In fact, I was never emailed what the graduates got emailed. So I'm kind of behind as to what graduates were seeing Whenever they sent it out last week, because I think that's when they sent it out. Is that correct, Josh? Do you know of anything changing? So, as far as I hear, then the plan is still to move forward, uh, rain or shot. Okay. So, um, however, I, I would like to say, and really fast, did Taylor just raise his hand, or is it still there? Um, I wanted to add very quickly, and Senator and I, if you have something to add right after, you can. Um, the president did, did let me know, because I brought it up to him, uh, that if if there was just some creative solution that would work out a lot of the concerns they had because he was just saying there's a lot of logistics and moving a lot of students to the Cowan Center with the safety concerns that he has and stuff. He said that if students do have really creative solutions, he is open to hear it and that he didn't pick this and that they didn't pick this decision just because they wanted sit, uh, students to sit there in the rain. That out of the many different pros and cons of a lot of different situations, that sadly this is just what they have decided and that they're going to work a lot as to what can be done to alleviate what students are concerned about. Um, and to fill in anybody who wasn't here, um, basically that commencement is scheduled to, and the fact that it, in the case that it rains, uh, to still be held in the rain 
um, and that ponchos will be provided for guests and uh, the like and, and for students who are graduating as well. Um, other in, in, indoor viewing options will be available, but that's still the case. Um, also for uh, both uh, Senator Hines and uh, Senator Barria that they'll have uh, eight guests per student who's attending. So and I think that's the, the big major thoughts that a lot of students have. As I said, I think the president is open to hear, and it's just, I don't think that they're naive of the situation as much as like there, there's a lot of pressure on what is the, the best option and a slew of not really good options considering uh, what, what is available. So I think we could still raise concerns as we, I'm in every meeting that they have. And so uh, yeah, Senator Hyde, and then we'll go to Senator Hyde, sorry about that. As far as safety concerns, for moving into the county center, is that regarding to like COVID, COVID safety concerns? Yeah, I think the the reason for that is because they would have to, as as I've heard Josh say, I don't know the specific number, but you'd be looking at close or not over 20 different ceremonies just to allow every student a uh, capability of graduating, and that's really only allowing students about three guests, and that that's just a rough. I mean, that's just off. The dome of what I know of the number. So it's either and and it's either that or hosting in the rain and do that do it that way. So I think they're concerned about hosting that many. Is it currently like scheduled to rain or? According to Senator Botter, the Farmers Almanac shows rain for that week, but that doesn't necessarily Farmers Almanac. But this time last year it was a nice day. So May 6th, I think last year it was like 65 degrees at the time that they did it. It was a beautiful day. So our hope, I think, is that it's just not going to rain. I mean, and the, the goal is that if it doesn't rain, it'll be a pretty good ceremony. But if it does rain, what are you doing? So I know, Senator, I think you still have a question. You can go ahead. Um, it's loosely related to commencement. Does student government have the thing to go around your neck on the robes? Uh, uh, yes, us, uh, let's see, cords, cords or, cords, yeah, stole. There's like a cord and there's like a sash. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, we do have those. Uh, do we I have, find a photo this one right there. yeah, so you can turn it to you. Come <laughs> <right now. laughs> Here, I'll have to listen. No, Here, he's going to hold it up to the camera for y'all. That's yeah, actually really nice. Very nice. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's nice. How do cool. I get one? <laughs> How does uh, email me your address and I'll mail you one. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, any other questions and kind of that discussion item before we close it? Senator Nelson, do you want me to bring up your um do you want me to bring up your chat messages to you answer your own question? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, I think you know. She I, I'm going to go with yeah, okay. the question. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Um, cool. So I guess we can, um, if we don't have anything else, I'll entertain a motion to close this discussion. Motion to close discussion? No. Second. All right. It was motion and seconded, so we'll move on. And does anybody have new discussion items or new items for new business? Yes, Senator Watkins. I do have a question. I I am going to graduate this semester, but I still had an idea for a couple of alternative projects. Okay. One, one of which is very easy. Uh, okay. I want to ask just uh, do we just create a PowerPoint for it? Like I remember one of the members created PowerPoint for his, I believe it was for the benches. Mm -hmm. And do we just, um, what should we include on that? So, what I would say just for the interest of this meeting, Email me and we can set up like a 30 minute time to talk those things out. Remember, I was doing senator projects my freshman year. I figured that was the best thing. If you have an idea that you want to ask everyone to hear about, maybe next week, that would probably be the time to do it. And then I don't think you would have a problem uh, figuring out enough to get a senator project lined up for the end of the semester. But you can reach out to me. I'll be in the office tomorrow. Uh, well, pretty much after two, I'll be available. So if you can come by UC 3400, I should be there um, and I should be available to talk about it. So also, if it's a project that you feel isn't feasible for end of semester, you can work with a senator who is going to be here longer than you past the deadline so that they can continue the follow-up. Say if you wanted to get something installed on campus, it may not happen by May, 
But if you work with a senator who's going to be here for a couple of more semesters, they can continue to do that follow up with facilities. So that may be something to consider as well. Yeah, Macy Ann and I did that for a couple of projects. Okay, well, yeah, that, no, that's a great idea. That, that's actually good. And we can kind of go in conjunction with what the people would want to do. Yeah. No, that's perfect because I know one, one of my yeah. facilities to be in. Then the second one, second one is. Yeah, and I think that would be the best thing uh, for for the uh, keep an order of this meeting and moving forward. Uh, yeah. If you stop by, we'll I'll have time to talk about it. That's what I'm up there for. So, um, with that being said, does anybody have any new order of business uh, for new business? I'd say business. Get down to business. So. Seeing none, then we will move on and out of new business into advisory comments. Um, going off of Jennifer's event that she's planning, uh, there's a high chance that Dr. Calhoun will be there. So I did. Uh, <laughs> I do expect that there's a strong representation from all the members that are at that event. It's a good time to. Uh, get to know the, our new president. Uh, he is very passionate and supportive of uh, student, the student experience. And he is still committed uh, to enhance that experience uh, because he does not understand that uh, you learn a lot from being involved as an involved student. So uh, please make sure uh, when that event gets finalized and we get more the final details. Uh, please try to plan on being there. It's a schedule conflict. It still means a lot to be there in the five minutes. Uh, and so the more students that are there, the more the mouth gets out, the more they show off. Like this is a good opportunity for other students to know about what you're doing for them, what Dr. Cameron is doing for them, and then this, we all can also use this to help promote upcoming elections. Um, couple of, a couple of things. Uh, I will. Or put my director hat on. Uh, I am going to be forming a committee very soon uh, that will be reviewing our student engagement platform. Uh, and so, if you are interested in technology and how that engagement platform works, uh, please let me know. Uh, the committee will be a spring and fall semester process, but I do hope to have most of the work done in the committee spring and summer. Uh, so that way we can get the documents. Uh, we've, we've enjoyed using Patriots today, but we're at the point in our contract uh, that we always want to make sure that we're uh, getting the most value. Uh, and so, um, if you're interested in that and would like to have an uh, opinion on who we select, this is a good time to it. Um, the next thing is our women's volleyball team went undefeated this season. Uh, and they will be hosting the uh, the conference tournament here on our campus, and so that is a very exciting opportunity. Uh, since I believe it might be the first conference that we will get to host as a division two school, uh, and they will be playing in their first round uh, on Wednesday next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, and so I would really safely like to pack the gym so that we're safely. Uh, to whatever their limits are. Um, and so the more students that can come out and support them, I uh, think better. I think that's what it, it says something when you go undefeated uh, in, the term, in the conference that we're in. We are in a very competitive conference. So uh, very proud and excited for our women's volleyball team, and I hope they will win. Uh, next week is Spring Fest, and so homecoming has been postponed. Uh, but we still felt as a department that we wanted to do something for students uh, and keep some of the traditional events that we um, have historically hosted. And so next week uh, will be activities uh, going on uh, for our distance campus. Uh, we are also going to pay for a virtual activity. Uh, and so if you're interested uh, for our distance campus center uh, and helping promote that virtual event, uh, let me know and I'll get you all the information. Uh, and we're also providing t shirts uh, to every campus as well. And so that way they can get a free t 
t-shirt. Uh, yeah. um, the big thing that I think students are going to be excited about, rain or shine, we will be doing profit. So we have figured out a way to safely host that event. Uh, so next Friday will be our, prop, our traditional profit tour. Uh, and so it's primarily for students. It's not open up to the entire community. Uh, we're not buying as much profit as we have in the past because we're really focused on people. Uh, and so uh, it's a weather guide, it's dry crew, can pick up your to go profit. Uh, if the weather is nice, we can keep our fingers crossed. Uh, there will be limited uh, tables and chairs. Uh, and then there will also be a baseball and softball game at the same time. Crawfish and then check out baseball softball uh, and enjoy the Friday afternoon. So, uh, get the word out uh, about all the events, but really, I want to make sure that we run out of problems. So, Friday is the big day for next week. Any questions? Yes, sir. About the crawfish, I remember the last time we met, we hosted it. That we had to sign up for it before we get started. Is there a way to sign up for this time? Or? Yep, you can always RSVP on Engage. Uh, and we'll have your information that way. Uh, but we're pretty confident right now that there will be plenty of students to show up. Uh, there's always a chance we could run out. We do want to run out. Uh, if we run out, we will not be paying for it. So our first order is our last order. So my advice would be to show up early. Um, all the safety measures will be enforced, so there will be six feet requirements, um, mask requirements, so you get the property to carry the uh, So I would get there early uh, before the line starts. So it's not going to be at the plaza or at Harvey Deck, it's going to be parking on the tent. So it's what we're getting uh, close to the baseball field. Oh, okay. So it's like it's. So so our complex parking lot? Parking lot 10 library, yep. The okay, long okay. library parking lot, but more on the other end by farmers. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's very exciting. Perfect. So we're seven. A little bit of something different. And uh, we know, just like I heard earlier about classes, everybody wants to kind of slowly move back to that tree or something. It's going to be nice to do our profit score and kind of feel solid. Once you're there, So. Help get the word out and hopefully didn't show up. Awesome. Oh, I do have one more. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Too late. I'm glad you can keep there because it's short. If you're interested in an officer position, you need to sign up. I final, like you heard earlier, I'm finalizing the ballot on Friday. So that way I can get it up on the website so people know who is running for what. Uh, I would like to have at least one person run for every position. Ideally, I'd like to have two people run for every position, uh, but I know that not everybody qualifies. Uh, so, if you're interested in being an officer position, talk to me, talk to the assistant uh, keyboard manager, or just sign up. So, the application uh, is in your engage page. Uh, if you can't find it, email me and uh, I'll send it to you. Also, for our distance campus students, you can also you can still be an officer. So I know that was a, uh, a question that we had a few years ago. Uh, if distance senators could be as an officer, and the answer is yes. Okay. All right, Jennifer, did you want to let him get another change? Yeah. Oh, okay. So since Josh mentioned it, and I have not finalized our food vendor, we are actually going to have to do the event the following week. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be, but also there's a prediction for nicer weather that week, uh, so we will have more people at the UC. Hopefully, usually when it's rainy and gross outside. That's what you're saying. Meet the yes, meet the SGA. So okay, I see Josh making the face right there, but I think, and I, I, I almost talked to Jennifer about it. I think that might favor the president's calendar more. They haven't responded to me because that that was only like ten days away, realistically. Right. Like, like ten working Reach out. So I, I like I'm I'm gonna I'll be quick to go down there, but um, I think the positive note to give Josh some uh, to alleviate his stress, he's pretty excited to come to it. So I think he'd rather us move it and him be able to come and him have to move his schedule around because he already did that for our already did that to him for Arbor Day twice. 
Um, so I, I hope that we can work with that. I think that'll make it better. We can do a few more marketing things. I can do two tabling things before, and uh, we can talk that out. But I don't think we have anything else. Um, so I guess I can entertain that motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. We're about to get this vote, but all those present in person um, in favor of adjourning the meeting, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Awesome. And we will. I mean, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, next week, we probably will have a busier meeting, even though that stinks that it'll cut right into the volleyball game. Uh, you guys want to have a meeting at the volleyball game? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Just in the middle. Why not? Yeah, that's great. Because Senator Nerdman can always motion to say. I don't know. Let me just get 30 minutes in. Just skip this officer report. I can email you guys the officer report. We can start 15 minutes early at 45 minutes. Correct. You guys be down? Knock it out. Yeah, I, I would love making yes. a volleyball game an event. If we could all show up in our SGA polos. Okay. All right, you two. You heard it. Uh, We're going to be at the, the volleyball.